Welcome all once again to the uh, lecture of data structures. Today we will discuss about pointers. Pointer is the concept what you have already studied in your first semester. Today we will revise few important points regarding the pointers. Already we have uh, studied pointer as uh, different operators. The operator uh, are like address of is represented here with the ampersand. The second operator is value at represented with star. So this address of and value at operators are very important while using the pointers. These operators will help the pointer to make use of the real data within a pointer and related to the pointer. Declaration of normal variable is defined here, which is represented in the form of integer x, whereas this integer x uh, is most of the times used for declaring a normal variable, whereas the pointer variable are quite similar in representation. This is represented here, integer star p whereas the star is represented with value at pointer with which we will be able to access a particular data in that variable. The pointers in C language is a variable which stores the address of another variable. There are a number of different types of variables exist in C programming, integer, float, character, double, etc all those data types has a kind of pointers which will be able to access the addresses of that particular variable. M many times the ampersand or the address of variable is used for accessing a data which is provided by a user. Here the scanf percentage d address of x or ampersand x is defined here. So this address of x will tell you which particular data to be accessed from a user and stored at which particular location. This address of will define at which particular address in the memory the data which is collected in x has to be stored. Value at p, the star p variable is used for storing the contents of that particular location should be accessed and displayed. So printf will print the value at a particular address which is stored in p and the respective value will be displayed out to the user. So this is how the pointers will use address of and value at with operators for a practical use. This is a, a particular small area of a memory is defined. The addresses in the memory are defined in the form of address locations known as 0001, then 0002, then 0003 and so on. So these addresses will have a spaces in the memory. This is a small part of memory with which we will be able to understand how the value will be stored in the memory. If we assign a value x a data 0, 05 to a variable x, then variable x will hold a value 0, 05. So this 0, 05 value will be hold into a variable x, but this variable is a understanding of a general user, whereas a machine will understand in the form of a memory location or address, it is known as 1002. So here 1002 is a memory address at which the data value 05 is stored. But general user can understand it as x is equal to 5. He understands that 05 value is stored in a variable x. So likewise, we have addresses 0001 and so on around 1 GB, 2 GB or 3 GB, 4 GB, depending on a computer specification, the memory is available and the memory addresses are available for that particular RAM or main memory. 
So as if we keep on storing a values into the addresses, these addresses will be referred with the variables that we define in a program. Here in a, pro in a small c program example is provided. We have integer x and star p, a pointer variable star p as well as in, in variable small variable integer x is defined, declared. So once we declare a variable x that is collected using scanf into a variable x, once we get a data into x, then the zero if a user provides 0, 05 as a value, so this 0, 05 will be stored in a, that particular memory location with the reference of x. Whereas this particular x has an address known as 1002, where 0, 05 value is stored. So this 0, 05 value is assigned to a variable. It is understanding of a general user. So when we assign address of x, address of x, the address of x is 0002. So this 0002 is assigned to p. So now p will hold, p is another variable which also has address, some reference address. So this p will hold the address of x. The address of x here is 0002. So this 0002 is fetched here and stored into P for uh, for the references. So now P will hold 0002. So whenever we refer P, we will refer 1002 and this 1002 address will hold 5. So whenever we print a value of a variable X, it will print 05. Whereas if we print value at p, value at p means value at address 1002 and value at 1002, 1002 is a 05. So this is how we use a pointers in a general C programming. There are number of advantage, advantages exists for pointer. First of all, a dynamic memory allocation method is used for the pointers. So whenever we want to use dynamic memory in the program, then we have to apply pointers for that particular programming section. If we have written a small program and that particular program need to assign or generate a new variable, so that variable at the at runtime. Runtime means during a program execution. When a new data storage is required as at execution time, then we will use a pointers or dynamic memory allocation for a storage or for a creation of a new data. Then passing an array, passing of array and strings to the function are more efficient if we use a pointers. We just need to send the starting address of an array or starting address of a string to a function with the pointers, then it will automatically will have a hold on that particular data or a memory space with which the data array or a string can be very easily accessible using pointers. Next is passing addresses of a structure instead of entire structure. The function is easily easier with the help of pointers because once we create an object using a structure, so every object will have an address. So this address, this object will contain lot many different data types within it. So instead of creating an object or a copy of that particular object, we can just refer the starting address of, a, of that particular object for manipulation of the data in that particular object. It will be more easier if we use the pointers. If we want to allocate a memory in a runtime, then we need to use few different functions. The functions are malloc and alloc. This function will allow us to 
reserve a memory space or to create a new memory space for a pointer at a runtime. These two functions are already having a function declaration in stdlib.h header file. You can use it while programming. Then if we, here is the example provided integer star p, whereas a integer pointer p has been declared. So if we want to allocate a memory for p variable, then we have an example here which says that malloc function will allocate a size of a data type integer. Integer needs two byte. So this size of will calculate size for this particular data type and will assign the memory address to P. So this is how we declare a particular memory for a pointer P. Then we have to understand how the point how the array will be transferred or communicated to a particular function. So here if we pass an array to a function we have to create another array where we can get all the data. But if we use the pointers then the scenario will become more easier. We have a main function here. So this in this main function we have declared an array say arr123 the array size is 6 declared here and some few data items are entered into this array. Here is a function declared say fun and we are passing the address of starting array element. So arr123 zeroth element will be transferred the address of first element address of 1 address of 1 will be transferred with the help of address address of operator ampersand to the function. So we are sending the address of 1 to the pointer. So here we have a pointer P which will hold the address of first element in this array. So this element this will hold the address of 1. So it will print here the value at address of 1. So the value at p means address of 1. So it will print the value of this particular address means 1. We will get at the output as a 1 in the first printf. Then p will be incremented. Now p has made increment to point the next item in the array that is 2. So the increment will start pointing a pointer to point 2. It will print the value 2. This is how we can keep incrementing a pointer to make use of 3, then 4, then 5, and then 6, and so on. This is how we can just use the address of an array instead of transferring the whole array to the function. So it makes more easier to work on the addresses in the memory. This is an example of a pointer with a structure. So here a small structure has been defined. A struct student, a name of a structure is a student whereas roll number and contact are the two variable of integer data type has been declared in this particular structure. So with reference to this a small memory space is defined here. So this memory space will make us understand how the data objects has been stored. We have the addresses defined in the memory space 2001, 2002, 2003 and so on. These are the addresses of memory locations and the respective value is stored here in the spaces. This is for our reference. So for this particular structure, we have objects like struct, student, star p and k. k is a normal structure object where p is a pointer type of object. So we have to create, reserve a space for p. So this space has been 
reserve with the help of Malloc function which we have already studied in the last slide. So size of struct student data type has been calculated and this memory space is allocated to P. Now P has a hold on this particular structure. Let us assume P has stored or reserved a space in 2008th location where K is uh, having a storage at 1 location. So this is how we can store K dot roll number is equal to 10. So this 10 value is stored in K dot roll number for further use. We are assigning a address of K. Address of K is 2001. So this address of K is assigned to P. So P is made to hold the address of a object K that starts from 2001. And now P will hold 2001 so that it will be able to access the roll number as well as contact of K. So if we print percentage D P roll number so it will print the value 10 because now P is pointing to 10. P is pointing to K dot roll number. Whereas if we change the value of K dot roll number, so the value of K dot roll number will change to 20. So it will change to 20 and further it will be printed with the help of dot operator. If we are using pointer objects then we have to use arrow operators if pointer pointer p then arrow operator if we are using a normal object then dot operator so pointer operator and dot operator varies depending on which kind of object or which type of object we are using We have one more example for understanding the pointers and structure. We have declared a structure, say struct student. We have three different types of attributes defined for a student object, student structure. Say integer roll number, integer pointer type next variable and integer contact. So these three different variables or data types has been defined in the structure named student. So in the main we have defined three different three different variables P, K and R. P is a pointer type whereas K and R are the normal structure type objects. So since P is a pointer type object we have to declare a memory so p is equal to struct student star because it is pointer type then malloc size of struct student so size of structure type of student structure has been ca calculated and that much memory size is provided to p now p we are assigning a value 10 to the p roll number so p is a pointer type and it has a roll number as a as a attribute so we are assigning a roll number 10 to a p roll number if we print p roll number then we'll get a 10 we assign a value 20 to k dot roll number since k is a normal object it's not pointer type so we are using dot operator k dot roll number is equal to 20 r dot roll number is equal to 35 we have assigned if we print a value of k then it will print 20 since it 20 has been assigned in the right hand side we can see the local variables k r and p are assigned and this is a memory space available what we can see in the memory so now we have revised few important points of pointer i want you to write a program for to copy a data from one array to another array using pointers. Thank you.